morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, just a, a quick announcement today. There's a sign up for lilies on the entryway table if you'd like a lily. Um, a choice. Oh, there's choices there. T tulips or lilies are your choices this year. Um, so if you'd like a tulip or a lily for Easter, then the sign up sheet is on the entryway as you come in. Um, do you remember how much they were, Charlotte? Seven dollars a piece. Okay, seven dollars for each. So, um, are, and then uh, this coming week is the uh, uh, ad board meeting and uh, trustees meeting as well on Wednesday. Are there any other announcements this morning? Oh, food pantry is Thursday. Whew, I almost forgot about that. Food pantry is Thursday then. Anything else? All right. Well, let's open our worship in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you respond with me in the invocation and our call to worship? God of shelter, God of strength, saving God. Even if the earth shudders, even if mountains tumble into sea depths, making the waters churn and cease, and shall not be afraid. You are with us, God, our stronghold, God of Jacob. Joy streams through your city, through your sacred dwelling. You are with us, God, the city. At dawn you scatter the enemy, kingdoms topple, earth crumbles at the sound of your voice. You are with us, God, stronghold, God of Jacob. Come, let us see God's wonders, God's saving deeds. He breaks the bow, snaps the spear, burns the shield, stamps out war. Be still, God, says God. Know that I hold power over all peoples. You are with us, God, our stronghold, God of Jacob. Our opening hymn is O Four Thousand Tongues to Sing, number 57. <laughs>
Once again this week, I'm going to ask you to get your hands out so you can look at them. So look at your hands. So simple and so small when compared to the rest of your body. Ten digits and two palms with knuckles and, and sinews and skin all over them, right? Who would imagine the wonders that these little things can perform? Who could fathom the authority that they exercise as well? For they can exercise authority and plenty of it. From the hands of the crossing guard at the school who can stop traffic? Or the hands of one who holds the prison keys? Or who can offer freedom at the turn of a wrist? To the hand that holds the gavel in the court of law? So just look at your hands. What authority do they have conveyed in them? You know, Pilate knew full well what his hands could do. He was acquainted with such authority in a way that none of us probably uh, will ever understand. Because Pilate was the one, after all, who had the final authority over matters of life and death. Thumbs up, you got life. Thumbs down, was death. So what exactly is it that Pilate did on that terrible day at Jesus' trial? There wasn't a thumbs down, but there wasn't a thumbs up either. Instead, he washed his hands. He said, it's not on me. It's not my problem. And I'm thinking, oh, pardon me, Pilate, but I don't think that was the option, right? Uh, there wasn't a sideways thumb. There's a thumbs up and a thumbs down for a reason, right? You're to make a decision. And it can truly be said that Pilate did absolutely nothing. He did not put Jesus to death. In Pilate's view, Jesus' blood was not on his hands. But what is plain is that Pilate did that while he did not do the condemning or present that evidence against him, Pilate had the authority to free Jesus. He could have done that with his hands and just a simple thumbs up. Instead, he washed his hands and shirked his responsibility. His silence condemned Jesus to death. In the church, we kind of call those things sins of omission. You know, what I should have done in a particular situation, but I just ignored it or didn't do it. That's what we've named them, after all, sins of omission. They're not the sins that show themselves not in what we do, but in what we don't do. It's when we don't stand up for the right thing in the face of the wrongs. When we do not defend the defenseless, or when we do not speak the word of kindness to someone in need of that word of kindness. When we do not visit the imprisoned, or feed the hungry, or give thirst, drink to the thirsty, or clothe the naked, or love the unlovables. Is not each of these just another hammer blow that drives the spike deeper into those hands of Jesus? those sins of omission. It would have been easy for God to turn his back on humanity at that time, to have reduced Adam and Eve to ashes way back in the Garden of Eden and said, enough of that, I'm done with you. Well, we'll start over from scratch. But God didn't do that, did he? He did not wash his hands of them or of us either. No, God got his hands filthy that day with dirt and sweat and with blood. And we can thank heavens that he did. Please join us in unison of the prayer of illumination. Redeeming Lord, as you open our hands to cleanse them, cleanse our hearts as well. Open our ears to hear your truth. Open our mouths as well to proclaim your promises. Speak your truth and to defend the defenseless. 
Help us welcome all those whom your Holy Spirit places in our care. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 2, verses 2 to 5. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it and many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He, the, he shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples, and they shall bear their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, Come, let us walk, walk in the light of the Lord. And our epistle reading today comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 4, verses 12 through 18. Therefore is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeliness of sinful flesh, and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put the, deed, death, the deeds of the body, you shall live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to call back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we be also glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. be in a word of prayer with us this morning. Gracious Lord, we just thank you for this day to worship and glorify your name. And Lord, we just ask for your blessing upon this service that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts are acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, it's time once again to go visit our uh, our, our special television station there in Jerusalem at that time, JRSLM, uh, Channel 12. And we're once again at the foot of the cross, but we're hearing from a, a new guest this morning. Our guest this morning, we're going to hear his side of the story, is Pilate. A rest of sleep. That is what you just started to just complain. A rest of sleep. The messenger came to me that afternoon with word from my wife. I have had a dream, she said, concerning this righteous man. Have nothing to do with him. A rest of sleep. That is what she complained of. And since that dream of hers, I have had nothing but a rest of sleep. Even now, I know that I will lie down again tonight for another, yet another restless sleep. Thoughts of that righteous man consumed me. Now bear in mind that I did not nail him to that cross. He, he was not a crucified by my hand. 
I went to great lengths to, to make that clear, illustrating it, in fact, so that all could see. I, I then uh, washed my hands of that man's blood, and that was just fine as far as that crowd was just concerned. His, his blood be on us and, and on our children, they cried out. No, I did not nail that righteous man to the cross. They did. They are guilty of his blood. It was not even my trial, you know. Their counsel tried me and found him guilty. Guilty of what? Who can say? I said, I now, I now, uh, I now suspect <clears throat> that the charge of capital treason was trumped up. A way of calling my attention to the issue, of swaying my judgment, of making this into a, a political case. I suspect that when they, that uh, when they claimed that he was guilty of stirring up people, disturbing the peace, our great Roman peace, that was the closest, that was the closest they ever came to the truth. <clears throat> the truth is that they, the Romans, were the ones stirring up the people. The religious leaders of the Roman people. I saw them mingling with the commoners, inciting them to call for Barabbas, stirring them up until nothing but until nothing but that innocent man's blood could quell their quell their fury. Indeed, I do know how that council operates. I have uh, confronted them before. Shortly after I began my tenure here, I set up the traditional Roman standards around the city of uh, Jerusalem, circles of gold, fixed on wooden poles bearing the image of the emperor. I expected some uh, resistance to tell the truth. I welcomed it. I had heard about this uh, oh, this uh, uh, rebellious nature of these people and uh, thought that it uh, prudent to teach them a, 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 a lesson. <clears throat> this Roman territory, after all, it is only right to these folks, like many others all around the world, bend, bend to the powers that be. But these people will not bend. For six days, they just protested those standards. When I stood firm in, in my decision, the protests grew more intense. When I threatened them with violence, they argued more vigilantly. When I threatened their leaders with death, they did not flinch. I was, I, I was the one who bent. I was the one who gave. Even, and even, and even uh, that wasn't enough for them. When I then removed the standards from, from the city, I sought to compromise by setting up a few, a, a, a few golden shields, not, not standards, shields. And, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and not, uh, everywhere in, uh, and not everywhere in, uh, Jerusalem, just, 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 just at my own personal residence. No images, no idols as they call them. These simply, these, uh, simply had my name and the name of Tiberius inscribed upon them. Still, they still persisted. I was defiling their holy city, they claimed. They went right over my head, petitioning Rome. Word got to Caesar. Tiberius himself sent word that I should then like remove the uh, shields and then went on to uh, 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 rebuke me for causing an affront to these people and their uh, uh, and and their religion. This from the one to whom I was uh, that I was giving honor. Since that incident, things have only gotten worse. The Roman government, at my request, began construction of an aqueduct from from their city. The water supply of this city was also been a problem. Even the histories and the writings of these people show evidence of that. When their great King David, King of the Jews, first conquered this place, he gained access through the water supply. So, so, so it just stood to reason, at least as far as I was concerned, that these people would learn to appreciate Romans if I offered them what we do best. The aqueduct was a masterpiece of modern uh, of uh, modern uh, engineering, beautifully constructed with arches and stone, it carries a never-ending stream of clean uh, of clean uh, spring water. Over forty stadia from its from its source, I built it as a show of good faith, a gift from uh, from Rome to them. 
Oh, when money for the project grew scarce momentarily, these things happen, I then arranged to borrow some funds from their temple, from their, uh, temple uh, treasury, assuring that it would be returned. The demonstration they held as I entered Jerusalem was evidence of their wrath. Tens of thousands of them riding in the streets, but this time I made sure that they were the ones to bend, not I. I sent shoulders out into the riding crowds. At my command, the shoulders threw, threw off their cloaks, revealing their short swords. My response to their insubordination of these Jews was swift, stern, and bloody. They, they did not bend, so... I broke them. So when they brought that man, um, so when they brought that man, that righteous man, before my judgment seat by heaven, I was not going to bend their will. They brought him here, not for a trial. That had, that had already taken place. Their council, the Sanhedrin, had already tried them, as they have the right to do. It is it is now rare that I that I uh, even hear of their of hear hear of their proceedings, but this is different. This was a capital case, and I have final veto power in all capital cases. They cannot put a man to death with without my approval, and I relish that tiny bit of uh, authority that I have. They had no case against this man. I knew that. I knew that soon enough. And oh, how I looked forward to vetoing their sentence to, to letting this man go free. They resisted, of course. They did. And, and uh, when I sensed that, that uh, this man's death was, was uh, important to them, expedient to their purposes, it only served to make me uh, want to fight them more. This time by Jupiter, they would bend me. It was his silence that gave him away. That proved that this man was no was no threat to the emperor. I have I have I have now tried traitors before multiple times, instigators and insurrectionists. They are anything but silent. It is difficult to silence them. In fact, they usually go on and on against Rome in favor of their cause. They are full of threats and bombast. But this man, he was no traitor. No. Whatever they had against him, it was no threat to Rome. And I told them just that. I find no fault in him, I said. But those stubborn leaders, they would not yield. Even after I had the man flogged, publicly, hum publicly humiliated, and severely punished, they would not bend. Until finally, they resorted to threats. You are no friend of Caesar, they said. Their coy and clawing way of just like reminding me of the standards fiasco and their subtle way of threatening to, to just bring this case and my unwillingness to bend to their decision to Tiberius's ears. Tiberius is, from what I have heard, in, in, uh, in uh, no mood to hear of more problems. Word has it, he has become dour and withdrawn. He has, he, has, he has now moved to the island of uh, Capri and is not uh, wished to be uh, uh, disturbed. Meanwhile, his, his, uh, his like, men in Rome have been uh, conducting treason trials in, in his stead. It would, it would now not take much for them to put me on trial. No, I did not, I, I did not condemn that, uh, that this righteous man, his trial was over and his fate was sealed. Before, be, before that he had even been uh, brought to me, he did not die by my hand. I have, I have, I have now washed my hands of his blood. I then washed his hands of my blood, of his blood. I'm sorry. They called him. They are the guilty ones. That is the truth. Or is, as I consider, what I could have, what I should have done. I am tormented by a restless sleep. The question that I have asked them now, haunting me. What is truth? I did not kill that man. That is the truth. But this is true as well. I did not say no. Thank you. Thank you, Pilate, for sharing your side of the story and in what you've done. Did you notice? 
his haircut is just like the yeah it is and we've got the, you know that nice looking picture up there of, of pilot and Kyle you look just like him today I'm not sure what that was all about well he might have a little gray and you're, you're just blonde so that's good that's good but you know it is true that pilot just did not say no you know he, he kind of washed his hands and threw that that towel in he advocated that power that he had in his hands, that thumbs up and that thumbs down, the life giving or the death giving. And that can be true for us in our lives as well, that we can give life and give that word of kindness or feed the hungry or clothe the naked or visit those in prison that Jesus was talking about. Or we can do death and we can do nothing when people are in hurting or in need. And so our question for us to think about this week is, what is your answer to that, to that uh, age-old question? What are you going to do with the authority in your hands? Thumbs up for life? Thumbs down for death? Or just not make a decision and ignore it? It'll just go away, right? Amen. Would you be in a word of prayer with me? Lord Jesus, you gave us the Beatitudes of, of what we should look for. People that are uh, going out and feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and visiting those in prisons, that those that do that are ministering to you, Lord. And so we just ask that you uh, help us to go out and minister to you by serving those in our communities that are in need and helping those that just need that kind word for the day. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. Our hymn of response is, take my life and let it be. sitting in the back uh, but we'll take we'll collect those tithes and offerings later and uh, 
but for now, we're going to just concentrate on what those blessings that God has given us are in our lives. Because we've each been blessed throughout our lives, and, and returning a portion of that back to God is how we say thank you, Lord, uh, for giving us, so that we can pass those same blessings onto those that are in need. Let's think about this as we sing uh, our doxology, Glory Be to the Father. joys and concerns to the Lord. What joys and concerns do we have today to lift up? The Illini one. The Illini one? That, that, was a, that was a great joy for some people. If you were an Iowa fan, <laughs> that, that was a, a not so great joy, but it was a, probably quite expected given uh, uh, how well Illinois has done. So hopefully they'll go ahead and win that uh, Big Ten tournament today then. It, it was a concern that they won for some people. Yeah, that was a concern for some people as well. Yeah, you're right. What are the joys and concerns we have to lift up today? We have a joy that Bruce got moved from Peoria to Broman, so he is um, having some therapy now to get his strength back. All right, so Bruce uh, was released from Peoria and he moved to Broman uh, and is. Uh, and they're undergoing some additional treatment and, and getting his strength and everything back. So uh, praise God for that, that uh, good praise report there. And of course, we had Kyle that helped us out this morning, so we just give thanks to him, God, for uh, Kyle's saying yes. All right. Let's set our thoughts through our prayer chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. <laughs> God, for our sakes, your son stood trial, and for our sakes, he said no to all that might have tempted him to not go through that path of suffering, for your word had foretold long ago. For our sakes, he emptied himself, taking upon him the form of a servant, obedient even unto death. And for our sakes, his hands received those nails. And he did not turn his back on us. 
And for his sake, we ask that you wash us of our guilt and sin, and not just our hands, but all of us to make us wholly clean. So that with our hands refreshed, renewed and revitalized, we may be equipped to deal with the challenges you place before us, the needs to be met, the work to be done, the hard decisions to be made and acted on. And Lord, today we just lift up thanksgiving for Bruce, who has moved out of uh, St. Francis in Peoria and on to Broman to continue his uh, rehabilitation. And Lord, we just thank you for the works that you have done in his life so far and continue blessings upon him as he uh, continues that journey to recovery. And Lord, we also thank you for the Illini winning yesterday. And uh, while that's a, a joy for some and a concern for others, Lord, we just thank you for being able to witness the sports and uh, being able to have some distraction from the loneliness of the uh, isolation caused by the viruses. So Lord, we just thank you for the gifts of the athletes that you have provided to them uh, so they could entertain us and, and give us relief from the uh, stresses of everyday life. And Lord, you, you know all the other things that are in our hearts and in our minds as we join together in the prayer which your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join in our singing our closing hymn, I Love to Tell the Story.
thank you ladies for lighting and extinguishing the candles this morning and as they carry the light out of the sanctuary this morning let us be reminded that this is what we should do is carry the light of christ out to the world so with that let's lift our hands up and receive god's blessing for today go into the world with full assurance hope and promise that the grace of the word of life is resting upon you the love of the source of life is embracing you and the transforming power of the breath of life is our help and strengthens us and even surprises us at times so use the authority in your hands as jesus leads you amen mm -hmm.